Hey everyone, welcome to a quick shot of romance. I am Becky, and joining me for this episode is Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Becky. Uh, so you and I were texting back and forth about this title, and I was like, do you just want to do a quick shot? And you're like, yes, I have big thoughts. I do. I need to talk to someone. Um, so on this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, we are reviewing Shattered Truths by Helena Hunting. This is her writing is H. Hunting. Um, this is book three in the Lies, Hearts, and Truths series. We'll link the synopsis of this book in our on-the-shelf show notes at buzzingaboutromance.com. So here's the deal. Book one was Little Lies. Book two was Bittersweet Hearts. Yes. And book three is Shattered Truths. Is this a three book series? Are we done with this series now? I really want there to be more. Well, I'm I just... need there to be more, but I'm afraid we are done. So, because based on based on what the series is called, we've hit the lies, the hearts, and the truth. Correct. But she hasn't said one way or another, has she? She has not. Um, okay, so this book just released August 28th of 2023. Trope, meet cute, opposites attract. There is a class difference between the heroines, or the uh, the heroes, um, hero and heroine. Words are going to be really hard. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, sports romance, new adult. This is the Lies, Hearts, and Truth series. This is a series of standalones. You absolutely can read these on their own. It is a next-gen series. It is. These are the kids of her Pucked and her All In series. Right. Um, did you did you read Puck the Pucked series? Yeah, I've read both of the previous series. Okay. Okay. So you're pretty like in this world. Yes, I am. And it is very nice to see like those characters as parents. It is. It's. I have thoughts on the Pucked series and the characters. And I do think that that's an absolute great show and author's growth. Yes. Because if you look at the ridiculousness of book one, even book two, right. you finally see her get into her pacing and her storytelling in book three and building these really complex, likable characters and then we go into when we get into all in, like it's dynamic. Yes, all those books hit. I would agree. Um, so anyway, put out percentage is twenty nine percent. The audio narrators um, for this book are Zach Weber and Andy Arndt, and there is no third act breakup. There is not. So did you survive? <laughs> I did survive okay, because there was outside trauma that caused the black moment. Or the dark Correct. moment. So we are going to be a little bit spoilerish in this review. So if you have not read Shattered Truths, I think you should go ahead and go over and read it and then come back and listen to this quick shot. Um, I do feel this book needs some content warnings, but I don't know exactly how. Right, without giving some of the plot away. Correct. Yeah, so we do need to be aware that there are... Um, mentions of domestic violence and harm to other people both um abuse both physical and mental and emotional and then um there is some on page violence near death experience yeah trauma trauma physical trauma <laughs> physical trauma so those are things to be aware of if any of those are triggers. If you haven't read this book and you're listening to us right now um, and you're curious, send us a message and we'll ask you what your triggers are and then we'll let you know if we think you, you know, should tread carefully or not on this. Now, I did not look. Is there a content warning on this book? I don't think there is because this book actually, like when I opened it, it started on the cover. So I, I don't remember seeing one. Okay, which Helena Hunting is a little bit of an older school romanced author um, and maybe hasn't felt the need for content warnings. 
But I think in all three of, especially this book, this series, this is an angstier series. Um, these books need content and trigger warnings. I would agree. And I mean, part of her like H hunting is like to indicate that these are a little darker than her other writings, but yeah, yeah I would agree. Um, okay. So let's just get into this because there's a lot to break down in this book. There is like a lot going on. So our hero is BJ. He is the son of Randy Ballistic and Lily. Um, and their book was Pucked Over, which is book three in the Pucked series. That is his parents. Right. I would, like you were saying earlier, I would say that's like where she like gains her traction and like you can really see her growing into a storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the heroine in this book is Winter. She lives in the same town that BJ's um, family home is. He is a college student, however. Right. Um, all of the hockey players seem to summer at Lake Pearl. Is that where? Yeah, Lake Pearl. Yeah, Lake Pearl. Yeah, so this is the kind of the small town where they summer. But I think that this is also, as the men retired from hockey, this is where the kids went to school and where they grew up. Yeah, that's what I'm gathering. They like they're building their community there. And we learn that they move they visit this cottage on the lake, I think in Pucked. I think that Alex and Violet like buy their house on Lake Pearl in their book. Forever ago. <laughs> yeah, but I just this is like the summer lake where it's right. outside Chicago, yes. up into I think it's Wisconsin and yeah. Um. So, one of the, what is it about BJ? Because he has been an adored character this entire series. Everybody's been wanting his book since book one. Right. And I think some of that is because he seems like he's never paying attention and he's always falling asleep. Which, um, when you like learn his schedule, you understand why the man just falls asleep whenever and wherever but he always gives the greatest advice without ever actually being in a like committed relationship yeah um he has like in lavender and cody's book like he like basically tells cody to get his head out of his ass um and he also gives like maverick great advice in his book so you expect him to be um, kind of a smarter, more mature character than his age, maybe. Yeah, he is kind of everybody's friend, the good time guy. Um, I think he is very much his own individual. He's a great blend of the characters of Randy and Lily. He wasn't too much of either one of them. And I really liked that. Sometimes in a next gen book, we'll get situations where the author really just kind of carbon copies the older version. Yeah. And she didn't. This was absolutely a blend of the two of them. Uh, yes, I would agree. Like a very well, like, like you can see like the physical in the like personality traits, like mixing. So let's talk about winter because she's pretty dynamic in this book. And initially, if you follow Helena on social media, you know that she rewrote this book twice. Right. Um, that many of her readers and fans were hoping for Randy to be with one specific character that she's kind of had as a side character, uh, Lovey but Bunderson, Butson. Yeah, yes. And um, she wrote the initial book with BJ and Lovey, and it wasn't the story of her heart. No. So she scrapped it and rewrote it. And I... Like, as I read these books, like, I did not want him to be with Lovely. So I was happy that she did. Yeah, it's um, so his heroine in this book, her name is actually Winter. And she's kind of new to the area. Um, the family has moved there. They lived in a different part of this, like, county. Um, her mother has inherited a 
kind of run down lake cottage um, near where all the big wealthy houses are on the lake. And right. Winter's family is struggling. Yes. Like she is definitely not, um, she doesn't fit in where she's at. No. Um, there's f- food insecurities. There's home security, you know, home uh, issues. She sometimes worries about being unhoused or the living conditions in which the family is living in. Um, her mother is trying, but her mom got pregnant with her when she was very young. And her dad is more consumed with his alcoholism than providing for the family. And it's, you know, it's kind of what we expect to see. Like once you are in you're poor, it is very hard to pull yourself out of being poor. Right. And she's, she's trying so hard. Um, but maybe her parents aren't trying as hard. Yeah. I mean, she's had a job since she was 14. She's working. She's trying to do online college because she can't afford to take the time away from work to go to college and doesn't have the money to do it and then her love so in this book bj is a figure skater like his mother and winter is the hockey player right and they i love that they make a funny joke about that movie the cutting edge yes we're like the cutting edge (laughs) but the opposite (laughs) which i thought was great i mean that was really um And we had the pleasure of talking, seeing Helena talk on a panel at Readers on the River. And one of the questions she had to answer was, what was one of the swooniest moments in one of your books? And she mentioned a scene that happens in this book. But I don't think that was the swooniest moment in this whole book. And there were a lot of them. So we probably have different ones. So for me, I think the swooniest moment is when she has to tough love BJ because he's had some things that have happened when she goes in and says, I'm here. We're all here, but you have to take a shower. Yeah. You have to make these first steps because if you don't make them, I can't do this. And I thought that it was really swoony on her part because she's supporting him but she's not letting him drag her down. Right. What, what's kind of funny is like my swooniest moment was kind of like his opposite one that he gives her in the earlier in the book. Like um, a lot of shit has gone down and she's kind of stewing in it and like literally like sitting in her yard like this is my fault. What am I going to do? I'm going to lose all these things that I've just recently gained. And he's like, all right, you've had your moment. It's time to like get up and move move on. on. I'm going to be here, whatever you need. Yeah. And now the characters are young. And I do think that there's a lot of things that they do that are age appropriate. Yes. Um, But then there are other things and other conversations and things they're seeing that really um, show some maturity. Right. And I would say like for like BJ, that's, I mean, he's, he's a devoted figure skater. So like he, that's forced him to grow up and then winner's home situation has forced her to be an adult quite early. So there's a couple of potential antagonists within this book (laughs) there is one who is lovely who is bj's best friend um and step cousin yeah they're all like i there is a family tree in the front it is not the same one that's been in the other books i had to like look at it like three times and i have read all of these books so yeah it gets confusing it's confusing (laughs) Um, But she could be a potential antagonist in this book, right? Because she and BJ are very close and she is very protective of him. But she also has this really big heart. Amazing. And gets the chance when she gets the chance to support 
winter, she does, like without a doubt. And I really liked that she knew when she knew winter from the um, food bank. from the food bank, but she doesn't out her. No. So I really like mad respect for that character right there. Yeah, that that got me, too, because I was like, she could have very easily just said something right yeah. in front of everyone. But there is a scene that goes down between the two, okay. BJ and Lovely, that it didn't... I, I think that shows it, immaturity. This is a scene yes. where the immaturity comes out. Because, so, Lovely and BJ are best friends. And they lay around and talk to each other and... The scene happens where he falls asleep in bed with Lovely and um, Winter's across the hall in bed. And the next morning they wake up, she's getting breakfast. He comes down and they are going upstairs to have the sex. And Lovely is coming out of his bedroom. Like, or she's, she's not even in like bed. fully yeah i don't think she's even fully out of bed like i think she's still they, asleep or something yeah yeah because she's like i'm up i'm up and winter freaks the fuck out yeah. and i felt like it was a major overreaction yeah um like really like you're gonna freak out about that right. you just had right. sex in his parents house that's not the thing I'd be freaking about. Well, she freaked about that too, but <laughs> she did. Um, so, and another potential antagonist in this book is BJ's figure skating partner, Adele. Which I knew she was going to be trouble because she doesn't get a last name. She's only Adele. <laughs> She's only Adele. Um, and she, I, I don't want to ruin it completely, but I did not think it was going to go the way it went. Right. This, I mean, there is some foreshadowing, but um, as a, like, romance consumer, this is not the way you would expect her to throw a wrench into things. Yeah, I really expected the typical misunderstanding, um finding them in a compromising position. Right. And you see, I mean, you see her like trying to steal more of his time and yeah. Just, yeah. Being kind of clingy. So. So now you've read all three of right. these books. Do you have a favorite? That's really hard. So like Lavender and Cody's book, I really like because I related to both of them a lot. Um, just like the mental health aspects of them. And we kind of know both of them fairly well from the other series. Um, but I really enjoyed Maverick's book too, because he wasn't who you expect him to be. And we don't know a lot about him from the other books. Right. Right. Um, so I really liked Little Lies. Like, I really, really loved that book. It, again, the mental health, the anxiety that she deals with is really, really well done. Um, I think my struggle in this book was the chemistry seemed to come and go. And there was a lot of suspension of belief that happened within this book for me. Right. Um, yeah. And I think some of that has to like, you just got to be like, oh, well, well, these are like powerful people with lots of money. So they just make things happen. Yeah. Like there were some timeline issues for me and some things like with her. <laughs> and the other piece of it is, so if we have a male, a romance where the male is the hockey player, we get tons of teammate time, Right tons yes. we they have locker room scenes we get to know them and in this book winter is playing on a team right but it's only one maybe two interactions on page with team and that really right. bothers me that we didn't get as much team time in helena's books that when the dudes are the hockey players 
But we I, got I would agree. Tons of ice skating time. Yes. I yes, we did. I mean, we like and most of the team time we get is on the ice and then she's not even on the ice that much. No, um it just I really needed I think that that would have helped cement some of the other things that were missing in this book. Like her growth, that suspension of disbelief, of belief that I had to give up on timelines and things. If we could have had some maybe more team interactions just to see how strong this program was in helping her build up and give her this confidence that it feels like came on overnight. Right, because she's on a summer league and some of the players go to the same college. And yeah, so like th there's Fern, who's the captain. Like, I feel like she could have really been like a mentor because um, you see like this small connection, like spark. And then that's all we get. And I know it's a matter of juggling like all these other characters because we do get some side characters. We get Quinn, we get Rose, we get lovely and her sister and then lovely's brothers and you know we're seeing lots of characters coming in and out but they were all dynamic for bj they were not dynamic enough for winter i needed her i mean and then we had the side story of her mother leaving the abusive relationship and you know connecting to clover who's maverick's um fiance i just I just wish we had had more team. I think the book is great. I, I just agree. feel like that was a missed chance to show that women can be teammates. Right. And it would have, would have shown that like, she has like a system outside of DJ and his system. Like not that his system can't be her system, but she should also have her own. She should, she should have her own support system because you just never know given, you know, you know, because it's, you've met via a relationship and not necessarily okay. organic friendships. So um, is there anything else in this book we should talk about? I mean, it's, it's pretty heavy. It's got its light moments, but yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, do you have a book you think we should review for a quick shot of romance? Send us an email to the bees at bookcaseandcoffee.com and we will add it to our TBRs. Jenny, thanks so much for reviewing Shattered Truths with me. Thanks for having me. Until next time, everyone. Happy reading. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 